Yay! Cool. Okay. I'm fashion designer at FIT, the um, Fashion Institute of Technology. And I'm just passionate about exploring different materials and how we can um, make clothes more sustainable and like um, improve the whole fabrication process of clothes. So let's um, start. If you guys have any questions also or any comments, please, please feel free to like chat, um, use the chat to um, express what you're thinking and we can talk about that later. Um, so you can go forward. This is just um, my little introduction and there's my portfolio and my Instagram if you guys want to reach out. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. There, go. there we go. Yeah, so um, my portfolio and my Instagram, if you guys want to reach out, if you have any questions, if you want to um, see more of my work. Um, and then the next thing we are going to see is our agenda for today. So the next slide. So we're going to start with um, clothing production. So just like an overview of general the general cycle of fabric production um, and how clothes are made. Then we're going to talk a bit about fabrics. So fibers, yarns, and fabrics in general. We're going to talk about the issue with fabrics, so like fabric waste, um, such as fabric scraps, and also like the planned obsolescence in clothes. We're going to cover a bit of alternative fabrics. So peanut tags, algae fabric, hemp fabric and some sort of like alternative fabrication methods, um, like recycling, upcycling, and customizing your own clothes as well, like three, as like three different things. And then we're gonna have a Q&A in the end, um, if you guys wanna ask questions, if you wanna like talk more about the subject, um, but it's gonna be pretty um, simple and easy um, and hopefully inspiring. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is just like the clothing production. So it all starts with a raw fiber, right? Um, and there are like many of those, we're going to talk a bit more of, um, of those later, but basically like cotton or like wool, um, nylon, polyester, silk, um, all those fibers get transformed into a yarn and then that yarn gets transformed, gets transformed into a fabric. They process that fabric and then um, this whole process is called subtractive manufacturing because the material, the fabric is cut down. Um, so like they, they use the patterns, they cut the material, they subtract the material. Um, like say the shape of a blouse and then it generates scraps right and then that um, pattern for the blouse is then like sewn and then there's the finished project um, product and it's then sent to like the stores but we call it a subtractive manufacturing because we have a piece of fabric and we subtract the material that we're going to use and we just um, throw away the scraps and what we're not going to use and those are usually not recycled so the next um, thing we're going to show yeah, so this is just like an example with bamboo. So we have the bamboo stalk and then it's processed into a fiber, the bamboo fiber. That fiber is then processed into a yarn, the bamboo yarn, which is then woven into like a fabric. So that's like the general process of um, fabrics. And when we're thinking about like cotton or like wool, it takes a huge amount of space and resources like water um, to clean the fibers, to process the fibers, to grow, grow all these plants and animals and just provide um, the resources to make um, those fabrics. Um, so it's really not a very environmentally friendly process um, of generating material for fabrics. The next slide. So, and when we think about fabrics, there's just this huge variety of fabrics that we um, see out there, like in the stores, and each fabric has a different purpose. Um, next one. Um, depending on like how they're made, the materials they're, they're, it's used when making the fabrics, um, they look different, they feel different, they have different sets of properties. Um, so it's really, there's no easy and simple answer on how to like make sustainable fabrics, sustainable materials. It all depends on like the, the materials you're gonna use, the effects that you want and the properties that your um, material has. So next, next slide. Um, the only issue though with fabric is the fabric waste. So as we talked about, um, when we're like producing clothes, um, all that material that is being used um, generates scraps, right? So you cut down like the shape of, of a blouse and then you have scrap material. Um, those scraps are usually um, discarded and just um, 
you know, it's not usable. They go to landfills and it's just horrible because they just keep piling up and taking this amount of space that's just unbearable. Um, yeah. Not to mention that like fashion makes clothes trendy. So whenever like something's not, you know, like trendy anymore or like, you know, there's like a newer blouse coming, you just want to like wear new stuff. So you end up like also what most people do, which is they just throw away their clothes, which is not, which also generates waste and it's not really sustainable. So what we're going to talk about is how, how to make clothes more sustainable, how to make uh, textiles more sustainable, how to be how more environmentally friendly with textiles. Next slide. This is just like an example of what I was talking about with subtractive manufacturing. Say you have um, some sort of material and then you remove your object and you have some waste. Um, whereas with additive manufacturing, which you're going to talk about in the future is um, where you'd like deposit the material where you have your object and then the amount of waste generated is just um, decreased. So some alternative fabrics um, that we're going to talk about um, are like natural fibers like um, so there's like fl uh, flax which is made from plants like the stems. Also there's like pineapple leather um, that requires a lot less space and resources to make. It's called peanut tax. There's hemp fabric, which is made out of um, sativa plants. Um, and then there's like algae fabric that's being developed in the um, in, in, in labs, like research labs. If you go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so all these like, it's very nice to see that the industry has had the, they're willing to like go explore what other materials and fabrics we can make using more sustainable um, processes. Um, so for this um, algae fabric, you could grow it in a Patrick dish. So like the little circular dish that we see in like movies and labs. Um, so it's, um, so you say you want to make clothes and you want to, you want it to be more like environmentally friendly. Um, you could research more sustainable fabrics because plenty of those aren't even like advertised. You don't know about their existence unless you really um, need, for, need them for a very specific purpose. So if you're making clothes and you want a more sustainable touch to it, or you don't want to generate a lot of waste, I would highly suggest you looking into like what sustainable materials are out there because those are usually not very well known. Um, the pineapple leather, for example, is really good. The quality is really good. And it's not even like that expensive, you know? Um, and then one thing that I would also suggest is experimenting with materials and try to, trying to create your own fabric, um, like at home with natural dyes, using um, like plants and vegetables to dye your, your fabric, which brings us to the next slide, which is um, alternative fabrication. Um, so one way that we can easily reduce the amount of waste that fabric generates and create these more sustainable textiles is by recycling, upcycling, and customizing our clothes. Um, so there's FabScrap. FabScrap is um, this company slash group that lets you take um, fabric scraps from industries and um, you know they sort them by color, by types, by patterns, and you can just use them to create your own clothes. Um, and then you can always upcycle your clothes. So say you have this t-shirt that you don't want to use anymore. Um, you can always like add more details to it. You can embroider it. You can, um, I don't know, cut it out into a different shape and just make it turn, um, transform it into something new. And then that way you're not throwing it away into a landfill. You're giving it a new life. You can always do a thrifting. You can always sell your clothes. Um, and then there are like the additive manufacturing process, which ideally is what the fashion industry should be replaced with. Um, some sort of like clothing production process that would be, wouldn't be as environmentally harmful as the subtractive one. So if you go to the next one, Jamie. So these are just like a few examples of what you could do with fabric scraps, for example. So you can make like um, like jewelry, you can make like pieces to decorate your home. Um, keep going. And this is just an example of like a cardboard um, project I worked on. So I had just moved into my apartment. I had a bunch of boxes that I was gonna eventually throw them away. Um, but I wanted to like, you know, to transform it into like something that would be cool, something that would be useful, something that I could um, make art with. So it's really just like taking any sort of like materials that you have laying around and just like experimenting with it, making something fun, um, trying to see what what the possibilities are when you have that material. How could you explore that material? How could it be used in ways that it wouldn't normally be used, you know? Um, and then when we think about the industry, if you go to the next slide, 
um, it's really about how the future is going to be. So this is a, a dress that was 3D printed um, by Iris Van Herpen. She's this designer, very avant-garde designer that experiments a lot with like materials and technology as well. And that is like the difference between additive manufacturing and subtractive manufacturing. Um, so because this dress, the way it was printed, the material, the white material was placed directly where the dress is, you know, like if, if the dress was made layers by layers. Um, so the amount of waste is really minimal um, compared to like if you had a block of material and you had to like carve the dress out, that would be the subtractive manufacturing way. So it's also about like to think, you know, we have to like think how we make our clothes, how we make our projects, how we can make things in a way that's going to generate less um, waste. And with that waste, what can we do with it, you know? Um, how can we take some fabric that we have at home and dye it in a natural way or like upcycle it into something new? Um, and it's really just um, so like, and then it's just like how this new, these new ideas come up, like the, the pineapple leather or the algae fabric or the hemp fabric. Um, I, I, my, I guess what I'm trying to do here is to like inspire you guys to like make fabric or like make any sort of material that you have laying around your source of creativity to like exploring and um, experiment with to create new projects. So you don't have to feel um, obligated to like go buy new materials or like feel like you can't create because of you don't have the right materials, you know? It's much more about how you use the materials that you have, um, how you upcycle what you have and how you turn that into something that um, is gonna be unique and wouldn't exist um, if you hadn't put in that effort into it. Um, so I guess that's it for the part that I wanted to talk about. Can you go to the next one? Yeah. So I, I wanted to like leave plenty of room for like questions and discussion because I really wanted to know what you guys think that the future is going to look like when it comes to like fabrics and fabric waste. And if you guys have any experience with fabric waste, upcycling, recycling, um, I don't know how comfortable you guys are with talking, but I would love to hear from you guys what you think of all of it. Oh, hey, um, yeah. thank you for your, for your presentation. First of all, this was, this was very inspiring. Like, <laughs> I'm really interested um, in like the subtractive process versus the, the additive. Like, um, I, I am, I, I am, I'm a stitcher. I, I worked in a costume shop for a while and I just sew as part of my own practice. And I, it made me crazy just like throwing everything away. And the, th and there's so much, the thing that always like stops me, um, is that the, the stuff that you cut out, it's often in really weird, but really small shapes. And so that, that's something that I've been kind of like, trying to turn my frustration into like, ah, I can make something. So I've been really experimenting with quilting and then with like um, stretchier fabrics, I've been, I can, I can show you. <laughs> I've been making like long braids and then making them into rugs. I, that's yeah. That's cool, yeah. That's, I think that's where the, the future is gonna go is just, I don't know. I'm just cleaning up my own my own backyard first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I 100% get that. Um, yeah, sewing also generates like a lot of um, waste. Um, I sew a lot as well, and it's just like terrifying the amount of thread that you have to like throw away if you don't upcycle it into something new. Um, but I love that you're doing that. That looks really good. <laughs> Fabric bits. I've just been using this to stuff pillows. Yeah. And there's this artist, um, can you open, um, can you type in Google since you're sharing the screen, um, Zero Waste Daniel, do you know him? I do not, but I am right there. Yeah. Yes. His work is really cool. Um, he makes like jackets and blouses using fabric scraps. And you, even really like tiny, tiny, tiny bitsy pieces. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna check that out. So, so yeah, so you could definitely use like those fabric scraps to make um, something like that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe try zooming in in one of the photos.
yeah it's really cool his instagram is really cool because he's posted videos of like how he makes that and it's just insane his sewing skills are really amazing so yeah so people are being creative with how they use the scraps you know and how um you can give life to something that yeah see like it's insane it's really cool um but i love that you're doing that already that's same that's insane that's cool <laughs> Does anyone else has any other experience that they want to share? Any questions? I think you're new. I have a question. Um, yeah. I'm curious about like uh, 3D printing because uh, I mean, I guess, is there a way to use recycled plastic for that? Yes, so 3D printing, um, the general filament that people use to 3D print is PLA, right? And PLA is made out of like starch, like corn starch. Um, so people say it's biodegradable in two years. Um, so, which is good, that's like very good, right? Um, but for it, to be, for it to be biodegradable, you have to send it to like a factory that's gonna keep heating it for two years. Um, and that's not really environmentally friendly. Um, because of like all the gas emissions and stuff like that. So even though most people are gonna um, say that like PLA is, um, you know, sustainable and biodegradable in two years, in reality, it's really not really um, that socially responsible, but there are many, many companies that have been experimenting with other um, types of materials for 3D printing. Um, so I'm pretty sure there's even an algae filament um, that someone was developing. I can look into that and send it to you later, but like people are definitely interested in making and experimenting with different materials for 2D printing. Um, and as for recycled plastic, there's also like PETG, which is like the plastic from um, plastic bottles, like soda bottles and stuff like that. Um, you can also use like a plastic shredder and just throw a bunch of plastic and generate little like tiny like um, plastic bits that you just then melt and create your own filament. Like that's, um, one way to create your own filament by recycling plastic um, bottles. And the only thing though is that like, um, this is good, you like the plastic itself, what you print isn't gonna be like biodegradable, but you're like recycling plastic, you know, you're like taking plastic that you have at home and just recycling it into something new, um, so this new filament. So there's definitely ways to make 3D printing more um, sustainable and more like eco-friendly. It just depends on like the material you're using, like what technique you're using um, and how you're gonna deal with it. But people have been creating many different materials and it's been um, the speed at which like people are creating new materials and new like things like that for 3D printing. Um, it's really cool. It's really um, nice to see how fast it's developing. Uh, someone said if I had any thoughts on dyeing fabrics and the most sustainable ways to do that. So there are like many, it depends on like the scale I think you're talking about. Um, but if you look up natural dyes, you can get basically any color you want with like just food, <laughs> basically. Um, so it depends on which food and color you're using. I can also share with you guys. Um, like a guide slash photo um, or some resources if you want to get into that. But basically you just like boil water with some sort of like food in there, like cabbage. I'm pretty sure cabbage gets, gives like a purple dye. Um, so you just put like a shirt, like a cotton shirt inside a bucket and then just put boiling water and cabbage and it's supposed to like dye it purple, you know. Um, obviously it's, it's not going to be as like consistent as if you use like a fabric dye um but it's definitely a more like sustainable way for you to do that so if you're just like working on small projects and you want to um give it color that's a really fast cool sustainable way to do it um using um these these natural dyes can you um look on google i think there's a bunch of photos for that I can, I can also like share um, some resources with you guys later. <laughs> Go to like Google Images, I think. Yeah, see, and there's just like a bunch of different foods and materials that you can use to get different colors, like that little colorful one. Mm 
-hmm. And then you can like experiment with like bleach, you know, and to try to get like some pattern or print. Um, but different foods um, give off different colors and you can use that to dye um, cotton or like yarn, anything. I have a question about that as well. Um, yeah. Does the when you wash it, if you if you're using a a natural dye, like does it come out of the wash easier, or does it like hold up? Hot? I think it depends on what you're using. Um, so some might wash off easier than others. Um, in general, I would say again, it's not probably not going to be as strong as like a fabric dye, you know, a chemical compound because it is like natural but um i think that and you know it's something that you can always keep redoing if it's like washing off if it's fading so i think it's worth it you know like it's uh, more sustainable and if it's fine if you have to like redo it every once in a while rather than just like using fabric dye also the faded look is kind of cool problems with cleaning the fabrics if they are biodegradable. Um, so I guess that's like complicated to answer because it depends on what sort of biodegradable fabric we're talking about. Um, I would assume that some biodegradable fabrics are easier to clean than others. Um, but in general, I don't think that should be an issue. Like it depends again on like how the, the fabric is made, the yarns, the fibers. Um, so say you have the the leather uh, pineapple the pineapple leather fabric. Um, I'm pretty sure that you can take care of it just as you would with leather. Um, so it's probably going to be somewhat as hard to clean as leather. You know what I mean? Um, whereas like if you may if you're talking about like the algae fabric, that's like similar to like silk. I'm guessing, um, or like yeah, or like a very fine cotton shirt. Um, so it would be as hard to clean as like those, but obviously I feel like most um, like alternative fabrics do require some sort of like special treatment when handling them. Um, I don't think you can just like throw them in the washer um, machine and just like, you know, like treat them like every other fabric. Um, but again, I think that like for now, these more alternative fabrics unfortunately are not going to reach um, mainstream production of clothes. So if anything, I think that those more alternative fabrics are going to be more used in like um, specific projects or like very big projects or like important pieces, like statement pieces for like um, important people or like events or shows. Um, I think that's how it's going to start, you know, um, and those would generally be made with materials that again, it would require some sort of like special handling. So I guess it doesn't really affect it that much now but when it does when and hopefully it will like the use of alternative fabrics come into like the mainstream fabric production um then our routine and the way we see and perceive fabrics in our clothes would also change i think i hope that answers your question I have a question, Gustavo. Yeah. My question is is just more about um, the future and the sustainability of fashion as a practice. Like, I I wonder a lot about what it means to be a new designer. If the world needs more designers, and like the designers that are really influential in that world are making use of materials that like as you said we we don't really get access to and so i'm kind of curious like in my own practice just generally like how do i approximate those those textiles that they have access to and um techniques that they they have been using um but also like ultimately what can i do that is any better um and like side question i'm curious your thoughts on the the material polyester because i have very complicated feelings about pop polyester <laughs> but i've i've recently discovered i can use it to make like muslins and 
um, that's really great because they're like basically indestructible. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what 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 do you think about um, newer fashion designers? Like, what can we be doing? And yeah, um, yeah. Okay, so answering your first question first, um, I think it, it comes down to like what scale of it you're interested in. So like if you're just working on a few projects at home, my answer is going to be different. And then like if you're working, you know, to like have a brand. Um, but in general, what I would say is that people are interested in other people who are trying to solve this issue, you know, um, like companies, um, designers of fabric stores, they want people who are going to tackle down this um, this issue with like fabric scraps. Um, so if you are interested in that and you reach out to people and you express an interest and be like, hey, so I'm, I'm experimenting with this, I wanted to do that and that, they are gonna, in most cases, um, they are gonna help you and like give you resources, you know? Um, so so for example, like one, this one company called Predoodler, they have this 3D printing pen, right? Um, and I, I wanted to experiment with it. Um, I wanted to like make fashion accessories with it because I feel like it's a nice concept. So I literally reached out to them and I sent them an email and I explained what I, what my my intentions with it were and like why I wanted to experiment with that. And they sent me one for free. Um, so that was really cool. So it's just like about, yeah, so how like you talk to people and um, reach out to people and you explain them why you want to do that. Like, um, I don't know if you want to like intern for someone, but maybe like you meet a designer um, that works a certain way like or has a certain process that you're interested in learning more about you can reach out to them and be like hey i'm really passionate about what you do say you like zero waste daniel's um way of like using fabric scraps you can reach out to them and say like hey i really like what you do um would you be able to like talk a bit more about what you do or like where could i what are some resources that i should look into if i wanted to get into something similar you know so because people are they're not going to be like not sharing their knowledge with you especially if it's something that's going to help the world you know like a sustainable practice um so to have access to those more privileged less known materials and like processes i would say just like reach out to people and like literally ask to like be a part of it you know um and they're going to point you to like resources maybe they're not they're not going to give you the solution but they're going to point you to like more resources that you could look into or like more people that you could talk to and that's going to eventually um get you into like learning more and also like experimenting um you can definitely develop your own processes and like fine-tune your own creative process to like have your own techniques you know but the more you talk to people the more you experiment it's just like this combination um in your second um question was on polyester i think polyester is very um problematic um it's very useful it's very nice it's very sturdy but um also like problematic but i do think that a nice um a nice way the best way i can see polyester being used is by like those fabrics that are like a mix uh, it's a blend you know like a polyester cotton blend or like a polyester wool blend a polyester sink silk blend um that way it kind of like mixes the properties of polyester and like some sort of like other fiber um, and I think that helps with how um, polyester can be very hard to deal with and very like hard to, um, you know, all the issues associated to like polyester, like how you dispose polyester. Um, when you have it mixed with like cotton or like wool or like silk and it's a blend, um, you have, um, you know, when you have cotton, like it's, you're going to still be able to like have a, a shirt that feels nice that you're going to be able to like breathe. Um, um, but you're still gonna have like the polyester property. So I guess my, the best way I can see polyester being used is through like those fabrics that are like a blend of polyester and some sort of like other fiber. Um, but I'm not like I'm totally against it. I do think it has nice properties, um, but I'm not, I don't think we should, um, you know, keep producing more 100% polyester or like 99% polyester um, clothes. That's not gonna be really helpful for the environment. And hopefully that answered both your questions. <laughs> Does anyone have any more questions? Anything they want to talk about? Any thoughts? Anything you're feeling inspired to do, you want to do, you want to explore?
Um, I've been interested in exploring like 3D printing and I was wondering like what applications or what softwares you would recommend using. Yeah, so do you have any experience 3D modeling? Like, do you want to model your own things or just like 3D print stuff you find online? No, I would want to model like I I know like I don't know it, but I'm familiar like with Blender yeah. and like Clo, but I haven't used it. Um, but I don't know yeah. if Clo is just more like model things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Clo 3D, you mean? Yeah. So Clo is more like. Um, it does the modeling for you, right? Because you just put the pattern and then it just like models the clothes. Yeah, but like if you want to get started into 3D printing, um, basically you just need a 3D object that you're going to print and you can model that yourself. And I can give you like a few software recommendations if you want to get into like 3D modeling. Um, and then once you have a 3D model, you're going to use this slicer software that's basically just going to like slice your model into layers and then transform that into like a code that you just send the printer. So basically you just have a model and then you put it into like the software that's gonna like, uh, you can like scale your model up and down, you know, like position it and mess with like um, how you want it print, printed. And then um, and then you just save it to like a USB stick and you just plug it into the printer and then you just print it and it's gonna print. Um, so basically the whole process is just having a model and you can go, you can either like um, model your own things using 3D modeling softwares or there are like a bunch of websites that have free 3D models of things that literally everything um, that you can just download, like Thingiverse. Um, you can look up anything on Thingiverse and then they have 3D models of like literally anything. Um, and then the, so like you could start by like downloading a 3D model from Thingiverse and then importing it into Cura, which is this slicer software. I'm gonna type them here. And then the software is this one. Yeah, see, so like they have three models of like anything. Um, it's really cool. If you, you can search for anything. And then once you once you download those models, you're just gonna import them into some sort of like slicing software, like the O2Maker Cura, which I sent in the chat. Um, and then once the model is in that software, you can mess around with the size. Um, and then it's gonna like, you click slice and it's not going to show anything, but like it's going to slice the model and save it into a code that you can just like, it's a file, you know, when you just put in the printer and you say you print this file and it's going to print. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. Um, the possibilities are endless really. There's like TPU, which is a flexible material, which is widely used when printing like things are going to be worn, like fashion accessories. Um, it's this. Um, so yeah. And also like YouTube is very, very, very helpful for 2D printing. So if you wanna get into like 3D modeling, um, just, um, or like 3D printing, definitely use YouTube and just look up a bunch of videos and try to like learn. And you can reach out to me if you have any questions or like any specific projects that you wanna work on. I can help you with that. Do you have access to a 3D printer? Um, at my school, I would. Okay. But I mean, I'm at home right now. So yeah. No, I do not. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like, it's way more scary than it, than it is in reality. It's really not that hard. Okay, thank you. Of course. Any last questions, comments, concerns, ideas? I have a question for everyone. So if you had to like, what would like the perfect fabric for you be like? How would you describe the perfect fabric for you? What properties would it have to be? How would it look like? And how do you think that could be made in a sustainable way? Question. I mean, it's, it's an answer and it's 
question together. Um, like silk comes to mind um, mm -hmm. and like cotton also come to mind. And I'm wondering like, are those actually sustainable? They're natural and biodegradable, but like, I'm sure it's a very complicated, and we don't have to answer it now, I'll just. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, when, I feel like anything that's mass produced isn't gonna be sustainable, you know what I mean? Um, no matter like what industry, if you're mass producing something, it's just not gonna be sustainable. But like in general, cotton and like silk are, um, they're natural fibers, yes. So like it's, um, you know, it's like something you find in nature, like it's um, biodegradable to an extent. Um, I would say that silk is, because it's more expensive, like people produce less of it, you know? So it's like in a way more like eco-friendly than cotton because the cotton like um, forms are huge. Like the way cotton is processed is such a complex process and it uses a lot of water. Um, so that's why it's been um, used less and less, um, even though we still see a lot of like cotton. Um, but I think, yeah, I think it all comes down to like the scale of production and like um, not even the production, but how you're gonna, what's the final, the final purpose of your product gonna be, you know? Like, what are you gonna do with it when someone is tired of wearing it? So say you have a cotton and silk, um, um, I don't know, like you do, um, you create a products of cotton and silk and you have a brand, um, it's gonna be somewhat sustainable because cotton and silk, but then say you accept people to return their clothes and they get a discount um, when they buy something after returning some sort of piece from your brand. Um, that way it's gonna be even more sustainable, you know, because you're um, keeping those clothes from being um, thrown away, you know, you're having them back and you can upcycle them and you can like cut them into scraps and use them into a project. So it's really the mentality that goes behind it, I think, um, when it comes to like how to make things more sustainable. There's an extent to like how the process is sustainable and then you can make it more sustainable with how you handle the whole thing. That's kind of why the, the algae fabric sounds so interesting to me, because maybe you'd be able to just grow it in the shape of the pattern you want to create, just bypassing the scrap process altogether. Like, mm -hmm. I need the weird bodice shape, so you grow that. Yeah, so that's what we would call some sort of, like, additive manufacturing, you know, because you're literally growing it to the shape that you're going to use, so there's not going to be any waste. I don't know. I haven't... Um, explored that fabric that much so I don't know if you can um, you know like make it grow a certain way um, but if you can like that would be really cool that would be really amazing um, but yeah that's the whole thing with additive manufacturing it's really a cool the idea of like just using exactly what you're going to need um, it's very environmentally friendly and very cost effective as well I've just been like researching like brands and I don't know if you're familiar with Girlfriend. It's like this athletic brand and basically what they do is they like use recycled fabric and if you return something or if you don't want it anymore then they like recycle it back and then they make like something new out of it. Um, I guess that's that seems like you know the perfect thing to do in order to like stop throwing away fabrics because you make it into something new ultimately. Yeah. But I mean, is there like something bad with that? I don't know. It just seems like too good to be true. <laughs> um, so I would say, well, even if they are getting products back, you know, um, I think it would be very, very hard for you to get enough products back to, um, to not have to produce anything, you know what I mean? So like you're, you, if you're selling like 10 shirts a day, I don't think they would get 10 shirts a day back, you know? So they would still have to keep producing things. Um, they would still have to keep producing things, you know? Um, so even though they are, they would have to produce less because they would get materials back, they would get the shirts back. So they wouldn't have to produce as much. They would still have to produce um, enough to like not not get in that situation where they don't have a product to sell because they haven't gotten any gotten any products back from people and also the products that you would get back to like upcycle into something new they probably wouldn't 
be sufficient to just make so like say you got a shirt back i don't think you can make an entire new shirt just using that one shirt you got back because it's probably gonna there's probably gonna be like a stain you know there's probably gonna be um i don't know it's probably gonna be worn out you know so like i think that even though you can use those materials and it's nice that they collect them back so it's not going to like waste on landfills um it's still there's still some sort of like need for different materials that they are, they would have to buy and like produce um and make clothes um well they use like plastic and like other waste so i guess when they get it back they like turn it into a thread and yeah then they like remake it yeah no it's definitely a very interesting process and i think that's like what the future of most brands will be like you know where you get to like return things like even with technology sometimes you do that you know like you return your phone and you get a discount when you get a new one um but even so you don't get a new phone for free just because you return your phone you know what i mean because you just can't upcycle everything that's in it um so that's the only downside that i can see and also i feel like it depends on the scale that it happens as well like i know it's annoying but like yeah like you'd say if they're, they're like a small brand they could take advantage of like all everything people are returning and making making new clothes but once they get really really big if they produce 10 shirts a day and they get back like three shirts a day they have to store all the 10 shirts a day they produce plus the three shirts a day they get back the amount of storage they would have to they it would require them to have would be huge you know like where are they going to keep all the things that if they get back and like the things that they're selling to people um so i think that in reality what you would have to do is like produce less um so that would be more sustainable so ideally the way it would work is to like make sure that people are sending the things back to them so they can reuse most of that so they have to produce less um, but you can't force everyone to return every part product once they're not happy with it anymore you know so it really depends on like how they talk to their their customers and how strong do they imply that the idea of like returning their clothes is a thing that they can do um, so it would help them produce less and make it more sustainable i think in that case like being transparent with the customers and like the, the values that you have would really help But yeah, that's a cool, uh, that's what I would do if I had a fashion brand. I would definitely give the customers an option to like return um, things so I could upcycle them or recycle them into new materials. Any last questions? <laughs> things you want to explore? Any ideas? Um, okay, I think we could wrap up this up. I'm going to see if you guys have any more questions for like five more minutes. Um, but I just wanted to thank you all for coming. It was great talking to you, great listening to what you guys are interested in. I'm glad people are interested in 3D printing. Um, that's really fun. Um, so again, if you want me to send us more resources on dyeing fabrics, using natural dyes, or just um, how to 3D print, what I think the future of fashion is going to be like. Um, do we have like all the emails from the people who are here? Do we have um, access? I believe so through the with friends. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I can email you guys all of that. Um, if you're happy, if you're interested. Yes. Um, but thank you all for coming. Hmm? <laughs> I'm going to put your Instagram here in the yeah. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, thank you all for coming. It was great talking to you. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. If you, if you guys ever make something with sustainable materials or like 3D printing or anything like that, um, let me know. I would love to see your creations. If you guys um, also have like projects that you want to show me or anything like that, I would love to see. Um, so yeah, please feel free to reach out. Um, and thank you all for coming. It was great seeing you guys. <laughs> I have a couple words to say about Nobody's Fashion Week. Um, yeah. The whole, um, the whole, I'm just putting the website here in the chat. The whole calendar of events um, is on our website. Um, we have over 30 classes throughout the um, 
upcoming four weeks. And Gustavo is teaching another class on 3D printing um, coming up soon. Um, and also we're having reporters in residence, which is um, we're inviting people who are interested in taking part in classes to come and then report on the classes, either by making drawings or taking notes or um, you know, taking a selfie of themselves, trying to make one of the things that we're making in the workshops um, to submit to a publication that we're creating. Uh, it's like a exhibition catalog from this whole um, six weeks of classes, which will eventually be printed. So if you're interested in being a reporter in residence, um, join our team. We have press passes for you. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much, Gustavo, um, for this wonderful workshop. And uh, I have one more question, actually, which is, yeah. is there like a new technology? Like, I just bought some shoes that are made out of recycled plastic bottles, um, which also seems too good to be true. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious, like, is there a technology that's on the horizon that you're like really itching to learn about? Um, when it comes to sustainable materials? Yeah, is there is there like something that you're just learning about or that you think is on the horizon for you to, to branch into? I, I'm i really looking forward to what 3D printing can do. <clears throat> it's like the one thing that um, I'm learning more and more and studying more and more like day by day. And it's it keeps like amazing me the possibilities and the, the materials that people are inventing for it, you know, and how people are using it. Um, there are like other things like laser cutting, you know, which is also really exciting. You can create a bunch of like cool projects with it, but also like the universe of 3D printing because there are like 3D printers like um, resin 3D printers um, where you don't use plastic, you use like resin. <clears throat> There's like powder 3D printers. Um, so it's really, I think the technology that, the I more like not the technology, but like the idea that I'm really um, excited about and looking forward to seeing the future, what's gonna happen is like how we can integrate these new technologies and machines in, to make the whole um, fashion system slash clothing production more um, like faster and using less resources. Um, I think that when we reach the point where we can generate clothes as fast as fast fashion, using sustainable ways and practices, then fast fashion will lose its meaning, you know? Um, and that's gonna be really exciting because then there will be no reason for people to buy things that are um, extremely cheap because of lack of human um, like labor conditions, you know, decent human labor conditions. The thing of Flux Factory. Ah, agora it's this. Mas é lá, né? Uh, so yeah, so I, I'm really excited to like um, see how technology and like all these technologies can be used to like um, improve the whole like general like fashion production and of clothes and sort of system. But uh, yeah, 3D printing would be the thing I would bet my money on if I had to say like what technology will be most used in the future for like fashion that would make things more sustainable. I think 3D printing is like. Um, Really, it's really exciting when you think about the things that you can do. I, if you guys are more interested in learning about that, you should come to my other class. <laughs> um, we're going to talk more about it um, and I can give more solid examples of what I'm talking about. But yeah. And which day is that class? That's next weekend on Sunday, I'm pretty sure, or Saturday. Cool. Yep. Thank you everybody yeah thank you so much everyone for coming um if you have any questions re um reach out i'll see if i send an email with the resources that i talked about um, but yeah thank you thank you <laughs>
Thank you. Um, so I was much. trying to ask a question. I don't know if y'all heard me. Maybe it's because I have headphones in. Oh. What was your question? Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, were we recording that? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Uh, Gustavo, I wanted to ask you um, what you think about, or if you have any ideas about like the future of sizing specifically, because it seems like a big problem that yeah. could be solved more in the yeah. future. Definitely. So, yeah. So I think that that will also be, so like the more, okay, so like the thing though with like, I'm going to mention 3D printing again, um, but say many clothing brands yeah, are, doing, I about that. you know, like they, they 3D scan um, their customer's body. So when they model some sort of like clothing, when they make clothing, it's literally perfectly tailored to that person um, mm -hmm. because it was built on top of like a 3D scan of their bodies, you know. Um, yeah. So I think that like when That's it comes so to sizing, yeah, when it comes to sizing, what I see in the future happening is clothing brands making it perfectly tailored to your body, you know, um, using technology, using 3D scanning, um, you know, like maybe you would go into like a store and have your body scanned right there. So when you get it, like uh, when you buy something, it's going to be perfectly tailored to your body. So that's like how I see the future of it. I think that's something that that's what's been used in the medical fields right now. So when they have to like props, like or like, you know, yeah, so they 3D scan whatever um, part of like that person's body needs some, some, some sort of like gear or anything. Um, so that way it's perfectly fitted into their bodies. Um, so that's what I think is going to happen with fashion. You're going to walk into a store, you're going to get your body 3D scanned, or even like you're going to go to this one store that like 3D scans your body and you can send that file to like whatever brand um, you're buying something from so they can work with it, you know. Um, but even if not like your body, I think they're going to have a wide variety of like 3D scans of bodies that you could pick the one that's like more similar to you in a way, you know. Um, but my general idea of it would be like, yeah, it's like more personalized um, clothing, like more tailored clothing, more customized um, sizing. I think that like those traditional like sizes, they're not, they, they just don't make any sense. It's faster for fast fashion, but then again, we can make like this, if we reach that point where like we can use technology in these machines to make fast fashion lose its meaning, you know, where we can just have access to like clothes that are gonna be better quality and like more tailored made as easy as like fast fashion and it would make no sense. And then we can have like these more customized sizes. <laughs> that would be so exciting. It just blew my mind. Yeah. So is this happening at all anywhere? So I know that you can get dress forms that are made out of 3D scans of your body. Um, so what I can, so what can happen right now today is say you'll get a, a dress form of your body um, it's going to be literally your body, like exactly your body. And you can send that to like, uh, like a tailor and have, and buy something and have them tailor using that dress from that's exactly your body. Um, but yes, you can like 3d scan bodies. You can, um, I, you can 3d model clothes, like low 3d, the software that, um, we were talking about, you can literally like 3d, you like draw the pattern and it shows a 3d version of the clothes you're making as you draw the patterns in that software, that's really cool. Um, so we have both technologies. You can 3D model clothes, you can have a dress form like that's your body. It's just like finding a way to make the production um, easy, you know, and acceptable. But I'm pretty sure that if you wanted to today to have something that was perfectly tailored to your body, you could, we have that technology already. It's just like finding ways to like make friends access that and use that um, and make it like available for customers. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. yeah. That's so awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, of course. I'm going to dye things with beet juice today. <laughs> hey. Oh, and you get to eat some beets at the same time. Win -win. <laughs> win -win. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks so much. Of course. See you next week. Bye. See you all next week. Bye. 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 Bye.